guys. Hi. Hello. Hi. We're back to plaque. <laughs> Don't you think it's time to stop with the plaque puns? They're making I... me feel a little blue. <laughs> oh no, you <laughs> didn't. <laughs> We've got to. We, I think. I think we carry on with the pack puns. You know, we started strong. We've got to commit to it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> In this week's vlog, we'll be doing a bit of research on Cecilia Payne Gapuchkin. We're going to show you what goes on behind the scenes of researching a history maker, as well. Okay, so should we start researching and show them that it's fun? Nice. Yeah. I like that awkward thumbs up. <laughs> Uh, so obviously an important part of when you're doing research and like looking into things is you need, a good mm -hmm. drink. Um, you need oh, yes. like a cups of tea or coffee or drink of choice. Oh, the English heritage branded mug, Eleanor. Perfect. Yeah, I know. Like yeah. such a try hard. But <laughs> this genuinely was the mug I was using anyway. <laughs> I mean, the first question is, have you, did, had you guys ever actually heard of Cecilia mm. before doing like, before like, doing this with, with, with the Shout Out Loud project. Yeah. Because I hadn't. Like, I had, but in the most vague, like, loosely, like, the name seemed familiar, but not until I read some of the research you guys had done earlier, did I go, oh, it's that person. Like, I think I had a sort of throwaway mention of, I did A-level physics. Oh, okay. And I think, like, she was a sort of throwaway line in the textbook. It was like, there was loads of stuff about this, like, the stuff her husband, her husband, her husband was an astronomer too, right? Yeah. There was a bunch of stuff about all the stuff he did. And then there was like one line basically like, oh, also he took credit for lots of her stuff. And I'm like, well, tell us more about her then. But it didn't. It just was like, oh, she's undercredited. We're not going to credit her either. I mean. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, well, because I mean, I owned a physics. I owned yeah. a physics GCSE and I'd never come across her. And if I did, I didn't, I didn't remember her name. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it was like, she's not like a known figure by any means. No. Um, I came across her. Oh. No, Karen. Oh, just by proxy, but like just mm -hmm. a vague idea of um, just hearing from triple science friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> someone who got undercredited. Yeah. I guess here, which... boards. But, like, yeah, like I'm a big fan of astronomy and I did lots of science at school and I'm like, I could barely recognize that. So that's not right. Which is bad because, I mean, yeah. at the core of it, you could basically say that she helped to discover what stars are made of. I mean, that's a mm -hmm. big thing like that's yeah. a big discovery and for her not to be that's a, a major thing, name literally yeah like to not be a big name in science that you yeah. know it's one thing yeah. knowing her name if you've studied it but I feel like that discovery was yeah, I feel like at school we're a sort of weird point a lot of the time with like that kind of thing like oh women in science yeah where it's like we'll really emphasize to kids the importance of like oh if you're a girl you can feel like you can do science too but like actually sort of wrapped up retroactively retroactively being like we should also celebrate these past women from science and sort of yeah. learn less sometimes yeah yeah definitely I mean we know yeah. a basic a bit about her like that she, essentially what she <laughs> discovered and essentially why we want her to be nominated but um mm -hmm. I kind of want to know a bit more I want to know more about it and I kind of want to do that myself do like us do that I want to be able to, like, to go yeah. to Howard and be like look at all this cool stuff we've discovered about her yeah. um, which I think would be quite fun yeah. um I suppose like the best place to start is just I mean with any research isn't it? it's typing the name into google and seeing mm. what comes up seeing the different websites that come up um, I mean even for getting a brief overview like I know sort of people like oh well you need to check the sources but like wikipedia for getting a very quick like overshot of someone's life is so helpful yeah I think like yeah. definitely there's the issue with Wikipedia not like to be careful with it but it's, it's yeah. a great like, obviously it's a great, yeah you need to be careful but it's such a good starting point yeah to get that first initial like general overview of, of, yeah. your, of your figure like, I think it's really useful and mm. then if you then want to actually do anything with that information like submitting it for nomination mm. or like presenting it to someone it's then like you know yeah. use that to corroborate the information you found elsewhere probably oh Eleanor your face is frozen mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she's acknowledged it no, oh, she's, back. Back. Yeah, she's back okay I think let's just let's yeah. start let's start researching Hello. 
Xenia's got some good music going, I can tell. Look at her. She's like, yeah. I'm yeah. sending it on a chat. It's really fun. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> oh, that was one website I was thinking of that's really good. Um, Britannica, the Britannica biblio- uh, sorry, the Britannica biography site. Um, they're quite well recognised, I think, and they give really good like overviews of people, of, like pe- historical figures, like their whole lives, mm. um, which are quite good. That's quite interesting. Um, the so while so it's talking about how she studied at the University of Cambridge, and it was mm-hmm. a lecture that she watched there that inspired her to become an astronomer. But it was interesting that it says she um, decided to look for opportunities. So she decided to move to the US and go to US because she felt that there were more opportunities to be a female astronomer in the US than there were in Britain. So i.e. basically saying that we weren't in Britain, they weren't very accepting of women in science, which I know I know is the case, but it's interesting that she felt that the US was more open to it and there'd be more opportunities for her. Yeah, that is surprising. Kind of makes sense because when was the suffragettes? Um, I think she went to yeah. she got a scholarship to study in America in 1923. So mm-hmm. that would have been in and around the time of women getting more stationed in society but I suppose it still would have been a new thing and I would imagine science was quite entrenched in like the male world at that time and would take a while for it oh, to yeah. open up as such it's it's shocking how much women would have played down what they did um yeah but it's yeah. like so relatable yeah mm-hmm. something interesting I found is um so apparently uh Arlo Shapley and Henry Norris Russell um, were two people who, uh, like, there were two um, prominent U.S. astronomers, uh, and they acknowledged her thesis, but they both disagreed with what it had to say. Um, but Henry Norris Russell was the one that was later credited. And interesting as well is mm-hmm. she got awarded a Henry no- Henry Norris Russell Prize Ooh. at like wow. age 76. Wait, wow. so she did some work. Henry Norris yeah. got the credit for it. And then later yeah. in life, she was awarded a Henry Norris Prize. Is, that's like yeah. such a bitter victory. <laughs> like that, you've won a prize, great, but you've won a prize that's named like, after oh, someone. Hey. That, yeah. yeah. Stole yeah. your. I mean, stalls possibly harsh, but you know. Like. But no, it's the same. It's so yeah. yeah. Oh, oh God! Crazy. See that would nowadays if that if if you were refused credit for your work, because, well, not refused, but if someone took credit for your work because you know they're a man and you're a woman, like that would just like do you know what I mean? People would be horrified. Yeah. Again, she'd written her dissertation, um, but when it was reviewed. I think this might be linked to what you were saying, Zania, because the astronomer, Henry Norris Russell, mm-hmm. um, dissuaded her from, from her conclusion. So told her, don't conclude what you've concluded oh um, about the composition of the sun being predominantly hydrogen. That was her conclusion. But Henry Norris dissuaded her from doing that because it would contradict the current scientific consensus um, of what the sun is made up of. And I think I think at the time the consensus was the Earth and the Sun were similar and made up of the same things, which obviously we now know is di- is, is wrong. Um, mm. The Sun is a star, um, yeah. and this obviously uh, Cecilia's conclusion that the Sun was largely made up of um, of hydrogen would contradict that it was the same as Earth. Um, and I and I suppose that assumption, that you know, preconceived idea would would have been made by men and the male scientific community and to mm. completely change that was, is one thing because it affects people's pride because you know it's different but for it to have been a woman that changed it and then also thinking about it with what you said so not only did henry norris dissuade her from making a conclusion about what the sun was made up of he then took credit later on for her groundbreaking work on what the sun was about that, see, that's just like, 
Mm. I don't like this Henry Norris. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, wow. Henry Norris, more like snake. Henry (laughs) Norris. Henry (laughs) Snake. Yeah. It wasn't just that he changed his mind and took credit. He did work and realised... He, he 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 did like some experiments and came to the same realized he'd come to the same conclusion just from different doing a different method so one it was only once he could prove it himself that he felt okay to take well to a to agree with her thesis um and then to take the credit for it but it is almost like that arrogance that he yeah. had to like find out for himself that he couldn't trust her yeah. well. And then not only did he prove that she was right, he then took credit for it. And it's just like, what? One thing I just came across, which is interesting, is I'm reading an article where there's a little paragraph at the end about what uh, she was actually like as a person, because I think the person who wrote it met her quite late on in her Mm. life. And talks about how she had a love of the arts and like all these other sort of passions it doesn't go into detail like I can't find out in what way precisely but like I just love seeing a scientist from history who we know like you know like not that science isn't creative but like so often all the scientists we learn about it's very like single track narrow field of research yeah just see her being like oh no I did this and this and she had all this stuff and a big family and did everything yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> like, this woman had it all. Right. Yeah, I stumbled across a sort of motivational, inspirational quote from, um, yeah, Cecilia herself. She wrote an autobiography, which was titled Cecilia Payne Goposhkin, an autobiography and other recollections. But in it, she talks a bit about um, when young women ask her for advice or careers in science and she's sort of saying don't do it for the money or the fame it's hard there are easier ways to do that and then she said that your reward will be the widening of the horizon as you climb and if you achieve that reward you will ask for no other and I just thought that's a really like wow she seems like a really cool person that's that. really like, nice quote isn't it I like that yeah really cool quote a talented writer to her list of skills of many skills a a woman of many talents (laughs) I don't know about you guys but I when I'm doing research I really like seeing photos of them do you know what I mean so like I'm looking at a website now and there's this picture of of her outside it doesn't say where it's from but outside like an old building and it just I think seeing an, an original photo of them makes it that more realistic you can like picture them mm. I might actually look up some pictures of her like it makes them feel more real which sounds stupid because like but yeah but it's true um I found an article that starts with a line that I find quite interesting which is um mm. it's a quote from her autobiography um, where she says, I spring quite literally from a pagan background. Wow. Okay. I think that's really interesting. Um, I didn't know that. That is cool. I guess it kind of like goes along with her as a person, though, in the sense yeah. that like yeah. trying to understand going the against for the herself. Stages quo. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to that point, uh, uh, apparently mm-hmm. in 1943, she published A Scholar in the World, which um, is her account of like how she sees the world and how astronomy mm-hmm. fits into it um well oh, that sounds really worth a read actually yeah. yeah I suppose that's quite an interesting idea because I, obviously there's always been that especially if you go back in time to when religion was a much more prominent thing in society like a prominent um part of society yeah. um there was all that battle between science and faith science and religion yeah and so especially when you're looking at the development of science and um and of the the academic world at a time Mm. when religion was still a a strong part of british society um it's quite interesting then i imagine that book would be quite interesting then Mm. talk about it well if if she's talking about how her her own views fit into the world of her views of astronomy because astronomy in particular is a is it Mm. was a tricky one for science yeah I think like it, was it yeah 
think like that's what I do. Yeah. The Earth is the one that moves around the sun, and everyone's like, that's how it changes. How good yeah. is it? Well, even just yeah. the basic astronomy and, and, and then the, the solar system and then the universe and then the idea of the Big Bang contrasting to yeah. the whole idea that God created the world in seven days, like just that in of itself is is a big kind mm -hmm. of was, was a big debate. Um, and then or imagine, you know, discovering what stars are made of and putting it into a very scientific and factual like makeup of a star, I imagine would contrast again to, mm -hmm. to the world. Um, doorbell, one second. Um, apparently, um, before she could read, she could look up and point to um, the Big Dipper and Orion's That's belt. That's so cute. Yeah. That's um, so cool. Yeah. She... I love that we know that. Yeah. So that's become part that has become like, that's been recorded by someone. Um, that's really yeah. cool. Like you know, it's like you say, "Oh, what was your first word?" And it's like, "Mama, Dada, whatever." And, but she's like, "Her first word wasn't <laughs> that." It was Dipper. Like, there's the there's yeah. a big dipper. There's a ride belt. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. It's little things like that that I personally find really interesting when yeah. it's like that social history. It's, yes, we know that they did this and these were their achievements, but if those little bits of history really kind of make help you to understand mm -hmm. them as a person um, and as a character. And I think like stories like that, being able to know the Big Dipper and Orion's Belt, that really shows her passion for science and that this was yeah. in her for like from a young age. The, the, the bit I was about to say was, uh, again, more just like a cool achievement in her life. Um, but it's a very cool one that obviously she went to study at Harvard in America, but then she progressed and she was appointed the, she was the first woman to be promoted to a full professor role within the faculty of oh, cool. arts and sciences. And then later she was appointed to the chair of the department of astronomy and became the first woman to head a department at Harvard. So, I mean, she's the epitome of being a trailblazer for women in science like that. You can't get away from that. Um, yeah. Like, I didn't put that on your. He makes me mad. I didn't know more about her. You know. Yeah. Mm. There's a bit here about um, like the in her legacy and the impact she had, mm. and it talks about how um, she became a role model for astrophysicist Joan Feynman. Feynman. Um, and similarly, when, in the case of this, uh, this lady, Joan Feynman, her mother and grandmother had dissuaded her from pursuing science mm -hmm. because they believed women were not physically capable of understanding scientific concepts for a start. You know, that, that's quite a shocking view to start with. Um, yeah. But she was later inspired by Cecilia when she came across some of Cecilia's work in an astronomy textbook. Um, and then that that convinced her that she could also follow her scientific passions, um, which I think that's cool. That not only is she, has she managed to do amazing things, what she's done has inspired other people who also experienced, you know, people telling them they couldn't follow their scientific passions and all of this. That, that Cecilia's work inspired, yeah, other women to kind of go, no, just because I'm a woman, that doesn't matter. Like it's fine. Um, yeah. Like people can overcome those barriers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think we found like quite a lot of really interesting stuff yeah. on that. Um, There's a lot of more out there too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're not going to put all of this in the in the form, but I think it will help us when we when now we I come to that. Books I want to go read. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna I go and email Howard as well. Just yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. By the way, it, like, by the way, yeah. just let you know. Form. But look how interesting she yeah. is as well. Um, but I think I think there's always a question on there that says like, um, Inter might remember what it was exactly, but what impact did she have on society? And I mean, I think from the research we've been doing, yeah. that's going to be quite easy to fill out. Um, I mean, we won't talk about it now because that's for the next vlog, um, <laughs> the next video. Spoiler alert. Wait, um, <laughs> but I think doing this extra research really helps mm. answer those kinds of questions. I'd, I'd imagine. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it really helps. But it just gives you a more well rounded view of. Exactly, exactly. Um, because I mean, we've talked about a lot 
in this, but there's still, I've, I've got a lot more stuff here that I, we haven't talked about. Keep an eye out everyone who's watching this um, for yeah. a history maker to come out um, and to find out more about Cecilia. <laughs> yeah. Um, see you all next time. See you all next time, yeah. <laughs> it's an awkward way to end. Um, yeah, thanks guys, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, we sounds like a fun really way. Thumbs up. <laughs>